No. All of this high tech is still using still the cloud. Using cloud. Yeah. Hi, welcome to the latest Battlegood Studios developer block. For those of you who've been following our progress on Steam, you've probably noticed that we've got fast track updates. This option that Steam gives us as developers to release some a little more rough around the edges update so that players who want to really see cutting edge of how we're developing the game can get some pretty rapid fire updates. The last one that was posted and the next one that are coming have some pretty significant changes in terms of some, some of the underlying code that happens, which is again why it's nice to have these controlled updates before we push it to everybody. And since it has some infrastructure stuff, I'm gonna pass it to you, George, to talk about some of those changes. Yeah, one of the things we haven't done as often as we'd like to is we haven't pushed things to the public branch. Uh, so people who aren't playing on the fast track branch aren't, haven't seen an update in a long time. One of the reasons we don't want to uh, do that is we don't want to create new save game formats where we blow away you know, people's existing saves and existing games on a regular basis. And we've had uh, to do a major set of internal revisions to some of the core game uh, data structures to have a stable save game format that we think will last us now for quite a while to come. And so this this update that's uh, just coming out to Fast Track is our final, we hope, uh, internal structure changes for our save game structures. We actually also are looking at a couple of optimizations. The total memory footprint and total save game footprint is down about 10%. We are hoping it will also allow some performance improvements, but that's all on the inside. Chris will talk to you a little bit about now what's in the next update on the outside. Yes, in terms of the actual functions, gameplay features, uh, the fast track that we released just over a week ago now introduced a new concept to the game, uh, Barbarians. And we had talked about this in one, our, in one of our previous videos that we wanted to add a little bit to the population of a galaxy in Galactic Ruler. And, uh, maybe that's a good place for me to add a little bit of structure for people who aren't aware of the way we assemble our galaxy. The idea is that there are sort of three kinds of races or factions that you might run into. There are the player factions, the one that you can choose to play as, and if you don't, might go to an AI region in your galaxy. There are also some non-playable, non-space-faring races. The idea is that every now and then in the game, you're gonna encounter a world that has developed, that has a race, but they haven't reached space yet. And that's supposed to give players opportunities to decide, well, do I want to trade with them? Do I want to exploit them, conquer them? Or maybe I want to give them spacefaring technology and let them unleash some chaos in the galaxy as well to try and change the balance. So one of the things that was added in the last fast track that we pushed is an extra race of space pirates that arrive in the same system as each of the spacefaring races. That are arrive. Yeah. Sorry. So this concept of barbarians that you see in a lot of other strategy games, this n limited interaction faction that can be a bit of an annoyance in the early game, but is also a good opportunity for players to cut their teeth on what is combat and how am I going to deal with other opponents. The balancing of these space pirate factions is one of the things that we're now evaluating. We've had some discussion on our forums about this, a quirk that came up due to the randomness of random numbers is right now in the game, when you start, there's a tendency for the pirates to arrive on the moon right next to your planet. We had been concerned that this might push a player into combat before they're ready, but we've had other people on the forum saying, no, I like that. I like that it's immediately there and there's a tension. Uh, long term, not sure what we're going to do. This is one of those places that we'd love to hear more from you. So General Mitten asked if the AI pirates were going to land on other planets. Right now, the intent is they will avoid that, that they start with a bit of planet bound ownership, some space bound ownership and a bit of crafts in space to harass with. And they, we worry about new players still getting their feet wet, being overwhelmed, that we want the pirates to start out being a little stronger than what you are but not really progressing in level. So in the late game, the pirates are not supposed to be as much of a challenge to the player as the other player factions that they're going to deal with. He also wanted to know, will they uh, colonize and conquer other stuff? Again, generally right now, the intention is for them to be uh, aggressive to anything they see immediately, but not really expansionist in their tendencies. 
He also asked how the AI is going to produce some of their units. The pirate faction are limited to the same things as any other player races. They're not cheating, they're not getting resources from nowhere. And that intentionally is one of the throttles we can put on there so the pirates don't run away with it, is they have uh, limited populations. They have about, I think we set them to be around 1 million population, of which the majority are in their military. They're essentially a, a gang or a cult. So this limit of resources is going to contain them somewhat, whereas the player factions, most of the races I think are around half a billion to three quarters of a billion in population. Still much smaller worlds than what the Earth is, but again, that's intentional because our galaxies are these broad, wide things. We don't want to concentrate too much stuff in any one place so that as you move around, it keeps things interesting. So these are some of the questions we're struggling with, some of the design decisions we've been making lately around how to keep making the game more and more interesting, that we've got a solid system in place, a gameplay mechanic that was developed through all the SR games. Now we're trying to modernize that and keep adding to it to make it more interesting. Yeah, so certainly if you have some ideas or suggestions, you know, feel free to uh, join one of our community groups on Steam, on Discord, on BG forums, and um, you know, give us your ideas, your thoughts, your suggestions, and we'd be happy to hear them and, and see where we can go with that. And we'll catch you for the next video. Take care.